Hello, my name is Kays and welcome to another RightBrain tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about the Houdini.env file. What is it? Why should you care about it? Stick around and I'll tell you more. Alright, so let's jump right into it. What is a Houdini.env file and why should you care? So any application on the Mac or Windows or Linux has a set of preferences, right? This is how you go about customizing your user experience within whatever application that you're using. Uh, Houdini's got like a very, very extensive set of preferences to um, configure all sorts of stuff within Houdini. However, not everything is accessible through these preferences right here. And some stuff, uh, particularly as it relates to third-party products and uh, uh, third-party render engines like Redshift, uh, need to be configured through what um, SideFX calls the Houdini.env file. So um, if some of you have never used a third-party uh, render engine or third-party product, chances are you've, you've never even known about the Houdini.env file. You probably just didn't really need to care about it. So you might not even know where to go find it. So uh, let me show you. On, uh, let's see, on Windows, um, the Houdini.env file is going to be in your main drive under the Users folder, uh, under whatever your username folder is, uh, in the Documents folder. And then you're going to have, uh, if you're using the latest version of Houdini, then it's going to be like a Houdini 17.5 folder. And inside that folder, you're going to find the Houdini.env file. Uh, Linux uh, is something very similar. I'm not super familiar with Linux, so bear with me. But I believe also Linux, um, you're going to find that Houdini.env file in the Houdini 17.5 uh, folder. On the Mac, it's a little more complicated because um, here I'll show you. On the Mac, you have to go um, in your user library folder. And the way that you access that folder is simply go into your finder click on the Go menu, and then hold down Option. You have to hold down Option, because otherwise this uh, library folder is not going to appear. So hold down Option, click on the library folder. This is going to send you right into the um, user library folder, not to be confused with the system library folder, which you definitely don't want to mess around with unless you know exactly what you're doing there. But this is the user library folder. And if you scroll down, go find your preferences folder inside your user library and scroll all the way down again in your preferences until you find a Houdini folder in here. So uh, click on the Houdini folder. Now in my case, I have like three different versions of Houdini. So you'll see like uh, these three different folders right here. In your case, um, uh, you're probably just going to have like this 17.5 folder. And inside this folder is where you're going to find this Houdini.env file. Now, don't let the .env fool you. This is just a simple text file. That's all it is. And in order to open it, uh, you can open it with any uh, basic text editor, um, such as simple text on the Mac, uh, Notepad on Windows. I mean, really, you know, whatever you prefer to use. Uh, I use this program called Text Wrangler. It's a free program made by the same guys, uh, Bare Bones Software, to make uh, the awesome BB edits. I just like it because when you're looking at anything that resembles code, it's just a little bit easier to uh, more organized to look at. But, uh, but as I said, simple text will be just fine. So when you open uh, your Houdini.env file for the first time, this is what you're going to see. And um, this is just like um, some notes that whoever uh, at SideFX created this, uh, this uh, Houdini.env file uh, sought to write in here. It's just kind of like, uh, not quite instructions, more like uh, just kind of little something to get you slightly familiarized with. Um, the first thing that you need to know is that anything that's followed, um, you know, that follows a pound sign um, or a hashtag sign um, is typically ignored by Houdini. And this is used uh, if you want to comment, if you want to add any comments for your own personal organization or purposes. Uh, you just put a pound sign in front of it and then type whatever it is that you want. And Houdini will basically ignore any line that's, uh, that's preceded by a pound sign. So as far as Houdini is concerned, this document might as well be completely empty right now because all it has is lines preceded by the pound sign, which it's ignoring. Um, Side effects gave us a quick little example of a Houdini variable that you can use in here. So uh, 
if I uh, delete this pound sign and save and then launch Houdini, now Houdini is actually gonna read this line right here, Houdini underscore no underscore splash equals one. And what this variable is telling Houdini to do is to simply not display that um, cool looking graphic uh, every time that it loads. So basically, um, if I were to uh, implement this variable the way it's written right here, when I launch Houdini, it would just go straight into this uh, without any sort of uh, Houdini logo prior to that. Um, I like the Houdini logo. Uh, I like the little graphic. I think it's cool. So I'm just going to keep the pound sign here because I don't really want to use this. I, I guess I suppose I could just delete this whole thing if I wanted to, but you know, whatever. If you've seen my uh, how to install Redshift for Houdini, uh, you've probably seen me kind of mess around with the Houdini.emv file already. And the way that uh, you install Redshift in Houdini is basically um, copy these three lines of code uh, into your uh, Houdini.emv file. And, um, and the first line is this Houdini underscore uh, DSO underscore error equal to. Uh, all this line is doing is just simply telling Houdini to keep a little bit more verbose um, level of uh, detail in the uh, whenever there's a crash in the logs. So uh, uh, the guys at Redshift just wanted, you know, they just felt that they wanted a little more information uh, to help troubleshoot any bugs. So um, so they included this as part of the um, of the uh, the error logging. Uh, whenever there's a problem with Houdini um, or Redshift. So that's all this line does. Uh, the second line is just a path that is uh, guiding, uh, I'm assuming like a Houdini to, to look at the, uh, the applications folder uh, where the main Redshift uh, binary is, which would be in my applications folder and the Redshift folder in the uh, bin folder. So this is uh, you know something that Redshift needs uh, in order to run within Houdini. And then the other important line is this Houdini underscore path. And this is basically where uh, you tell Houdini where to go find uh, specifically the, the, I guess, plugin version of Redshift that you want to use. Um, so in my case, it would be under the applications folder, under Redshift folder, Redshift for Houdini, and then I'm pointing it very specifically to this version of Redshift, which is the most up-to-date version that's compatible with Houdini 17.5. So, um, so that's kind of like, you know, how do you, uh, this is how you install Redshift and, and get it to run within Houdini. Um, obviously, if you're on Windows, then um, some of these directories will be slightly different, but the idea is basically the same. So, this is all fairly easy and simple, right? The problem comes in when you want to have access to other third-party products. Maybe you have like another rend red, ugh. maybe you have another uh, rendering engine that you want to use within Houdini. Maybe you have another set of um, extensions or HDAs or, or some other additional functionality that you want Houdini to be aware of. So. Um, in a future tutorial, I'm going to talk about this really cool add-on for Houdini called Mops or Motion Operators. And if you download Mops and uh, you look at the instructions, Mops basically tells you that what they want is for you to um, um, have an additional Houdini path um, for Mops so that it knows where Mops is installed. In my case, it's installed in uh, right here, oh, oops, right here where uh, my in my preferences folder um, for Windows users it might be installed in the documents uh, Houdini folder. But basically, you look at the instructions on how to install Mops and just saying really simple as I like, hey just have the Houdini underscore path equals and then point it to the directory wherever Mops is installed. Right? Wrong. So the problem with this is that Houdini doesn't like two separate Houdini underscore path variables. It only wants to see one. And uh, my guess is that if I were to like save and launch Houdini, Houdini would probably like look at this first line, say, okay, got it, and then completely ignore the second line. 
Um, so how do you do it? How do you uh, add an additional third-party product and have Houdini recognize it? Uh, you know, only using one Houdini underscore path uh, variable. So I'm just going to copy my uh, directory right here. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to delete this second Houdini underscore path because, as I said, we can only have one. And uh, all you have to do is just simply uh, paste it. You know, paste the directory under uh, you know the Houdini underscore path and. Uh, and at the end of the directory, in order to, uh, to tell Houdini, hey, this is one thing, and then Redshift is something completely different, you just uh, type a semicolon. And that's it. Um, so I have, uh, under the Houdini path, it's going to go under user case, library preferences, Houdini, 17.5 mops. So it's going to load up whatever is in that folder. And then it's going to be like, oh, OK, wait a minute, there's something else here. Uh, there's application Redshift, Redshift for Houdini, 17.5 dot 229 and it's going to load up redshift and then you'll notice that there's uh, this extra ampersand here and all this means is basically telling houdini and everything else everything else that you normally load so basically mops redshift and everything else um, and that's kind of how you deal with multiple um, products that you want houdini to uh, to have access to so uh, another example might be the Houdini uh, Game Developer Toolkit, which is another really cool thing that I'm going to talk about in the future. Um, and once again, like, I mean, uh, let's see here. I have my Game Developer uh, Toolset um, directory. And if I wanted to add it, I would just kind of click here under Houdini Path in between the quotes. There's quotes here. Uh, just uh, paste it and then add a semicolon to separate it. So now I have my uh, game developer toolkit directory listed here. So Houdini's going to look at that. Then it's going to be like, oh, wait a minute, there's a semicolon. So there's more stuff. So it's going to go here and find my mops. And then there's another semicolon. It's like, oh, okay, wait a minute, we're not done yet. And it's going to go and look for Redshift. And then there's going to be a final semicolon with an ampersand, which is like, and everything else that you normally load. So, um, so that's how you do it. That's how you actually have Houdini recognize and load up different, uh, you know, render engines. You know, so if you have like Redshift, but you also have maybe Arnold or you have RenderMan and so on and so forth. This is how you would do it. Um, there's another thing that I'm going to talk about, and that is how do you keep this Houdini path from kind of getting a little too crazy because if, if you you start having like five six or seven of uh, of this third-party extensions and and rendering engines and this this line starts getting like really really crazy and especially if you um, if you maybe want to uh, refer to it at a later date you don't really quite remember you want to have like a really clear idea of um, what is being loaded at startup here what is uh, uh, you know, w which ones of these kind of additional products is Houdini loading? Uh, maybe looking through this, it's just going to be like, oh my God, like, I, oh crap, like this is like really, really confusing. So there's a way to simplify this. And uh, the way you do it, it's actually quite simple. So um, I'm just going to move this Houdini path uh, a little bit uh, further down. You can set, you can create a variable um, that points to whatever directory uh, these products might be in. So for instance, let's say that I create a variable called Redshift. Okay, this is my uh, variable and all it is is um, it's just like just a little name tag that I'm going to use as a shortcut. And then I just say Redshift equals and then I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to grab uh, copy my Redshift directory right here. Boom. Okay, so now this entire directory right here can simply be replaced by this variable right here, Redshift. Except, in order to tell Houdini that, hey, this is a variable, this is not just some directory on your hard drive, you have to add like a dollar sign. So if you add like dollar sign Redshift, now Houdini is going to realize that this is actually pointing to this. And it's going to be like, oh, okay, okay, I understand this. So this a dollar sign redshift simply means this directory right here and you can do the same thing with the with the rest so let's say uh, mops for instance I'm gonna like just kind of copy mops uh, directory and just go here and type mops equals paste the directory okay 
And now, uh, once again, here I can replace this entire line with dollar sign mops. Because once again, Houdini is going to read this and it's going to be like, oh, okay, mops is actually this directory right here. And last but not least, with the game developer toolkit, um, copy this. I can type GDT equals that. And once again, uh, get rid of this and just type dollar sign G GDT. Ooh. GDT, there you go, semicolon, always a semicolon in between. Uh, so basically, um, this is how you can simplify your Houdini path so that in the future, when you open your Houdini.env file or maybe you want to send it to, to somebody else, it's pretty straightforward for them to say, okay, so he's loading up Game Developer Toolkit, Mops, and Redshift, you know, and maybe you have like Arnold and um, RenderMan or what have you, you know, so you can kind of, it, it just makes things a little bit cleaner and simpler to look at. So if you look at my um, Houdini.emv, uh, this is my actual Houdini.emv, the way I have it set up. Uh, you'll see that, uh, you know, I, I use like, uh, as I said, like this uh, pound sign to uh, uh, organize and, and make some notes. So for instance, I know that like uh, these three lines belong to uh, Redshift, uh, this belongs to RenderMan. Uh, but you know, I have it set up exactly the way I just explained it and uh, my Houdini path is uh, is pretty simple. I just, uh, just have these uh, um, variables that are pointing to their respective directory and uh, you know and that way I can kind of like look at it and just can see okay I got like Redshift, I got like RenderMan, I got like Game Developer Toolkit, Mops, Direct Modeling, CGMK and it's a little bit cleaner, it's a little bit simpler for me to look at. Uh, last but not least the other thing I was going to mention is that uh, the Houdini.emv file is not just used for um, you know, for directory of third-party um, extensions and plugins. Um, so, for instance, uh, if you've seen my other tutorial about like uh, you know, like the uh, how to um, use Houdini on a Mac, if you don't have like a middle mouse button, there's this variable uh, that I talked about, Houdini middle mouse button pan, uh, where you can kind of uh, disable it. But there's a whole bunch of other variables that you can use. Uh, you know that are documented. Actually, uh, I'm going to post a link in um, below in the description of this video, and I'm just going to link to this page. And this page uh, in the Houdini documentations has all sorts of lists of all the different various um, variables that you can kind of use. Um, you know, within the Houdini.env file. So uh, make sure you look at it, uh, you know, if you're interested and there might be some really cool function that once again, you can't do through the Houdini preferences, but you might be able to do through the Houdini.env um, file. So uh, anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope that it's gonna make your life a little bit easier. Uh, and I hope it kind of sheds a little bit of light over how to configure your Houdini.emv file. Uh, if you like this tutorial, please uh, please uh, hit like. If you didn't like it, I guess hit dislike. Uh, and uh, subscribe, and there's gonna be more tutorials coming. I'm gonna try to be a lot better about it. I've been like so busy. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna try to have um, some additional new future tutorials where I'm gonna talk about some of these additional um, really useful extensions that you can add to Houdini, like the Game Developer Toolkit or uh, Mops or uh, some of these other really cool stuff. So uh, stay tuned and thank you for watching.